Hi, welcome to chapter 6 of Operations and Quality Management. The title of this chapter is Statistical Quality Control or SQC. So this is the second chapter of the quality management chapters that we have in this book. In chapter 5, hopefully you remember, we did uh, Total Quality Management or TQM. Uh, we became familiar with the philosophy of TQM and at the end of that chapter we had the calculations for reliability you remember uh, we had two different types of layouts you know series versus parallel so in this chapter we will study the SQC so the major topic that we'll be discussing in this chapter are different types of control charts that quality engineers or quality managers use so X bar charts, R charts, P charts, and C charts. These are the four types of control charts or quality control charts. In this video, I will show you how to do an X bar chart. So also at the end of this uh, chapter, we will learn about process capability and the Six Sigma philosophy and other topics. So first of all, what is SQC? That's the set of statistical tools that quality managers and quality engineers use to evaluate and to assess the quality. So as the name suggests, it's based on some statistical tool. So there are three categories of SQC. Number one is descriptive statistics that you have seen in your other courses. So um, the mean standard deviation, variance and range, these are all descriptive statistics. So you guys are all familiar with that. Then the second category, which is going to be our focus in this chapter, is the SPC or statistical process control. That's the case that we will be inspecting some random samples of the output. And then based on that output, we, we would like to know whether or not the process is functioning properly. So you'll see an example, uh, then um, you will understand what we mean by a process and whether or not it is functioning properly. And then there's another topic which you can find in your textbook that's called acceptance sampling that's not covered in this course that uh, we do. So what is variation? Variation always exists in all kinds of processes. Variation leads to inconsistency of the quality of the product or the service that you offer. So companies and businesses always want to avoid variation and want to minimize uh, variation as much as possible. There are two types of variation. The first type is called common or random. That's the type that always exists. So those tiny variations in the volume or weight or other dimensions of the product, if that variation is small, we say it's always exists. You cannot really do anything about it and it's unavoidable. But we also have assignable causes of variation. So those are the ones that can be and have to be identified. Those can be actually assigned and related to, for example, uh, poor you know, employee training or something is wrong perhaps with the machines and stuff like that. So again, the two categories, common and then assignable. So this is a little bit of review of the descriptive statistics. So the definition of mean and standard deviation, etc. I, I believe you're already familiar with that. So um, normal distribution, the figure on the left hand side, there are two distributions. They both have the same mean, but different standard deviation. So the amount of dispersion is different. On the right hand side, the two have different means, but they almost have the same standard deviation. It's called skewed distribution. There are two types of quantities that we are interested in this chapter in evaluating and measuring. The first category is called variables. What are variables? Variables are quantities and characteristics that can be measured. So examples are the length of the product, weight, diameter, and etc. And then attributes. Attributes are some characteristics that are not measured, but they are counted. So you're not going to measure the percentage of defective items. Instead, you count them. So again, measuring versus counting. That's the difference between variables and attributes. And what we do in all those four types of control charts that I mentioned earlier, uh, we calculate the 
amounts of UCL, CL, and LCL. So UCL is the upper control limit, CL the center line, and then LCL is the lower control limit. We plot our, all of our observations in that chart, and then if everything, if all the observations fall between my upper and lower control limit, uh, I'll say that my uh, process is in statistical control, but if you have an outlier, just like the example you see here, then obviously we say that the process is not in statistical control. So you might remember from uh, the characteristics of the normal distribution that um, for normal distribution, always 95%, 95.44% of the observations are between mean, mu, minus and plus two sigma and then if you widen that range and if you consider mu plus and minus three sigmas then that percentage will be 99.74 percent of the observations or the type one error will be really small so we'll be using that uh, confidence intervals you know <clears throat> 95 percent and 99 uh, percent in this lecture and this chapter so like i said there are different types of control variables and then uh, the two that we study first uh, are x-bar charts and r charts what is the difference we use the x-bar chart to focus on the mean or the central tendency of the observations and then later you'll see that we use r charts to study the variability or dispersion of the process. So again, big difference. X bar focuses on the mean, somehow R uh, focuses on the variance or variability of the process. So let's see uh, what this example says and then we'll do the X bar chart, the first type of charts for this example. A quality control inspector at the Cocoa Fist soft drink company has taken three samples with four observations, each of the volume of the bottles filled. If the standard deviation of the bottling operation is 0.2 ounces, use the below data to develop control charts with limits of three standard deviations for the 16 ounce bottling operation. So on your, uh, in your handouts, you'll see everything, including this table and then some formula. So this slide shouldn't look scary. Um, the data that we have, as you see, there are three columns, uh, time one, time two, and time three. So this means that we have repeated the sampling three times. So let's say Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, or perhaps the beginning of three months, you know, let's say June, July, and August. So basically there are three different samples that we have. And then in each sample, we have four observations. So you see for time one, we have obs observation one, two, three, and four, and the same for time two and time three. The numbers that you see, 15.8, 16.0, and etc. these are the actual uh, measured uh, volume of the drink in this company. So. Um, the formulas that we use to calculate the center line and then the upper control limit and the lower control limit are shown here. So the way we calculate the center line, which we call X double bar, is actually the average of those X bars. So for every sample that we have, let's say for time one, the average of these four numbers, you know, 15.8 plus 16.0 plus 15.8 plus 15.9 is, uh, you can see that it's 15.875. So first we have to calculate the average within each sample. So for uh, time one, the average is 15.875. For time two, it's 15.95. And then for time three, that's 15.9. So uh, we say that x x1 bar is 15.875, x2 bar corresponding to time 2, that's 15.95, and then x3 bar, that's 15.9. So x bar bar or x double bar, that's like the average of, of the averages or the mean of the means. That's in this example, x x1 bar plus x2 bar plus x3 bar 
divided by k. What is k? k is the number of sample means or basically the number of times that we repeated uh, this sampling. So k is equal to 3 and then n is the number of observations with e in each sample. You know, uh, my students actually in the past, they made this mistake a lot. They confuse k and n. So k, number of times that you repeat the sampling, n, number of observations within each sample. So if you don't confuse this, then the rest of the, the, rest of the calculations is very straightforward. So we will plug in these numbers k and n and etc in the formulas to calculate cl ucl and lcl uh, in the formula for uh, ucl and lcl you you see we have a z value z is always two if you're looking for a 95 percent confidence or three if you're looking for 99 percent confidence so z is always two or three in the description of this question as you can see it says uh, with limits of three standard deviations so in this example z is equal to three again corresponding to 99 percent so let's see how we do the control chart or the x bar chart for this problem so on the next slide you see the calculation for uh, my center line or x double bar again that's the average of my x1 bar x2 bar and x3 bar so it's 15.92 and then you calculate your ucl and lcl using these formulas so x double bar plus z times sigma so x double bar is 15.92 as calculated above z again that's equal to 3. note that the formula for sigma x bar is equal to sigma divided by the square root of n if you go backward to the previous slide you see that there is a formula for sigma x bar again sigma x bar and sigma they are different sigma is the standard deviation of operations in this example it was given to you as 0.2 sigma x bar that's the standard deviation of the samples so once we plug in the numbers again x double bar is 15.92, z is equal to 3, sigma x bar, that's 0.2, divided by the square root of n, which is 4, so do not put the square root of k here, square root of n, so you see the value of UCL and LCL will be equal to 16.22 and 15.62, respectively. So, on slide number 15, this is how we do an X bar chart on the X axis we have our samples and then on the Y axis we have the volume of bottles so how many samples did we have again three so K was equal to three sample one two and three the first thing that we do we draw the LCL line UCL line and LCL line so uh, the three lines you know 15.62 15.92 and 16 0.22 based on our calculations next we plot the values of x1 x1 bar x2 bar and x3 bar on our chart so again those are the average of each column that we had so next you have to connect these dots a control chart with unconnected dots is meaningless so you have to connect that these three points only here and what you do at the end you compare the location of these points these observations with your LCL and with your UCL line with your lower control limit and with your upper control limit in this example all three points are between my LCL and UCL so the conclusion is on the next slide sample mean of the bottling operation at the coco fist company is in statistical control so you put a check mark again in this example everything was in between the two lines so it is in statistical control so obviously if we had even one outlier then we would say that the sample mean is in statistical control 
So that's the end of my X bar chart. At the end, uh, you have the question for the online quiz. That's quest, uh, quiz number eight. So you can see the questions here. I will uh, go over the questions and then you have to answer these questions on Moodle in the space provided. So good luck with that quiz.